Welcome back to the future this week, where we'll uncover new breakthroughs from humanity. And Pantus. Yay! The future is now. Reporting from the future. As we all know from the theology of Star Trek, space is indeed the final frontier. And just as frontiersmen in the past struggled to find safe passage to the new frontier, scientists globally are searching for a safe and reliable way to access space. Leading the pack of innovative ideas is the space elevator, supported by a recent release of space elevators, an assessment of technological feasibility, and the way forward released this week under the auspices of the International Academy of Aeronautics. The space elevator will consist of an Earth-anchored tether that extends 260,000 miles into space. The tether will be held taut by the rotational speed of the Earth and the anchor at the end of the tether. The space elevator will then proceed to climb the tether at the speed of a high-speed train from Earth to a geonode in space which will serve as a docking station or an observatory area with the best view you'll ever see in your life. Space elevators have long been a feature in science fiction, but thanks to advancements in material science, such as the invention of carbon nanotubes, which have the strength to weight ratio a thousand times greater than steel, only now the materials exist for science fiction to become reality. For more information about the latest assessment on space elevators, follow the links in the description below. In the latest edition of Futurist Magazine, there's an incredible article about using the One Laptop Per Child program teach poor, illiterate children in remote villages to read without schools. Amazingly, the team at One Laptop Per Child has found that if they send special educational laptops to remote villages that have no teachers, no literacy, no technological know-how, and even no electricity, the children play with the laptops and they can rapidly discover how to use the laptops, how to read English, and even how to hack the laptops. We tend not to give credit to poor people, and we just assume they're poor because they're not smart. But this experiment proves that human beings are exceedingly intelligent and resourceful. This program was specifically put together to monitor how people use the laptops and assist them with understanding the alphabet so that they could learn to be literate. The team also found that the learned information was rapidly shared with entire villages as the children taught their parents what they had learned. This discovery could revolutionize education, not only in poor countries, but all over the world. If students can be given a proper framework and teach themselves complex and critical tasks, the need for school infrastructure, access to expensive resources, and teachers could be dramatically reduced. And this could change the face of education forever. As we stated in last week's episode, here at FutureX, we are fascinated by the human story. So much of our history has yet to be undiscovered or has been hidden or even destroyed due to social or political reasons. Therefore, it's important for us to understand and share groundbreaking research into histories that are largely unknown. Recently, archaeologists at various universities, but most recently at the University of York, started excavating the ancient African city of Sango Manar. Sango Manar was once a jewel of the Swahili coast in the Middle Ages. The city was an important seaport for trade between India and China and various African countries. At a time when Europe was undergoing the bubonic plague, famine, political strife, military conflict, Sango Manara was thriving. The city features complex stone homes, a palace, a huge mosque, and even courtyards where citizens traded their goods. But today, Sango Manara is a ruin that seems only to have importance to the local community. Unfortunately, archaeologists from an earlier era didn't believe that it was a legitimate African ruin because they believed the architecture was too sophisticated. This idea has long been disproved, and now the archaeological community accepts that the vibrant Swahili culture was purely African in origin. In the future, we hope that places like Sangu Manara and other lost cities and civilizations will regain their place in history. Thanks for watching The Future this week. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in two weeks because we're going to... Super excited. So we'll miss you, but we'll see you in the future.